This is the command deck of the spaceship Asteroid, and you are the captain, seated in the centre there, in front of your impressive array of instruments. I am speaking to you over your personal contact televiewer, and you can see my ship, the Star Rider, on your forward televiewer. We are midway between Earth and the Moon, and we are bound for Mars, where we are to meet the deep space ship, the Aspirant. To while away the journey, I'd like to recall some of the adventures I have had, and since this televiewer is being broadcast to Earth, let's show them some of the equipment we use in space, and some of the things we meet too. Let's go. You see me here in a self-contained, total vacuum Mark VII suit. Below you will find listed some of its most important features. Radio mast of ultra shortwave radio, compressed air cylinder of closed circuit air supply, jet on universal mounting and chemical fuel container. All joints reinforced. A punctured spacesuit means death. Reinforced plastic boots with electromagnetic soles. Large universal vision anti-cosmic plastilite helmet. Ceiling ring to visor, metal with rubber hose lining inflated from air supply. Miniature teleview tray, referred to as the T tray. Control stick to jet. Twist grip, rotates jet for maneuvering in space. Hydro ammonal container and feed line to flame gun. The weapons of space. A. This is the Hydromatic Mark IV flame gun, which you see me toting with the spacesuit above. It was developed by Professor Macklin Devonport of the Interplanetary Research Institute in 1995. Oh, I must have missed that. <clears throat> the Hydromatic takes its name from the fact that it operates on a liquid hydroammonal compound, which is contained in a cylinder and fed to the gun via a feed line which couples onto the gun at A. Its lethal range in space is 2,000 yards. A useful weapon. B. This is the Atomatic. It's rather bulkier than the Hydra, but it has the great advantage of being self-contained. It fires 0 .20 calibre atomic bullets. Of course, a 0 .20 bullet in the old days would have been just about useless, but these, having atomic heads, produce spectacular results. C. Another type of atomic weapon, but working on the controlled fission principle. The radiomatic projects a concentrated radiation beam. Another brainchild of our brilliant Professor Devonport. It is a much heavier weapon than the previous two, but proportionally more effective. On this occasion, I had landed in the Venusian jungle with Lieutenant Rex Manley and Sergeant Rocky Cragg to search for Professor Devonport, who had got himself lost in the jungle. We had split up to cover the ground better. Suddenly I heard it, over my intercom, a call for help from Rex. Rocky had heard it too. We dashed to his assistance just in time. He had been pounced upon by a terathon, terror of the jungle. Rocky and I fired together and that terathon just disintegrated. Soon after that we found the Professor. We protested that he was not lost and that we were disturbing his investigations. I led an exploratory force of three inner orbital ships to Mercury in the latter part of 1991. I don't remember that being on the news. Here we go. Mercury always keeps one half of her surface facing the sun and the temperature on this side is that of molten lead. Mm -hmm. Actually, it doesn't always keep one half of the surface facing the sun, but um, that was what we used to think a long time ago, I seem to remember. Anyway, imagine our feelings when we saw, marching out of the blazing horizon, a group of seemingly human figures, Mercurians. As we now know, they are a friendly and cheerful race, and considering the conditions under which they live, this is remarkable. That's me sweating in the background in an asbestos suit. That'll be safe and healthy then. We first visited Venus in 1982. I don't remember that either. This trip was made under the leadership of Professor Macklin Devonport. I was with the Air Force Rocket Research Section at the time and was assigned to the project. 
we orbited Venus ten times, implying the dense atmosphere as an air break to reduce speed for landing. Suddenly, we were frozen into immobility by a voice, grating and metallic, on our intercom system. Hello, men of Earth. Follow me and no harm will come to you. Do as I command. Then we saw them, six bubble-like craft which suddenly surrounded us. The professor decided to obey, wisely as it turned out afterwards, for the Venusians could have blasted us out of existence. Crash landing. This happened a couple of years ago, when I was taking off from Mars. The fuel pumps packed up when we were half a mile off the ground. I managed to get the ship over on her nose rockets, which were still working, and eased the landing. It was pretty bad. A rescue team dashed from takeoff area and rushed me away to dock in a pressurised hospital tank. I survived. Yes, I guess that. Now, would you believe it? That chap in front on the right, helping to carry the tank, is Sergeant Cragg. He was with me in the ship. That man's not human. We visited Mars in 1982 for the first time. Where was... Well, I don't... I, this wasn't on the BBC News. I... The expedition was made by three ships of the space fleet and I was placed in command as Space Master. And then, in the distance, we saw a mushroom-like creature on stilted legs with tentacled arms and a three-lens eye. A Martian. He raised a tentacle to his gun, then lowered it again and just stood staring while more of his fellows appeared. The Martians surrounded our ships and for three days remained there, silent and unmoving. The tension was horrible. At the end of the third day, the leading Martian thought, Now we know you, Earthmen. Welcome to the Alchemenos. This was telepathy. The Martians had been studying our minds, and it seems we had passed the test. The Martians are good friends, but they would be formidable enemies. Well, here we are at last. There is Mars, and there is the deep space ship, the Aspirant. As we draw near, we see that she is surrounded by space-suited men. Two transport ships are bringing in last-minute supplies. I am joining the Aspirant as commander. I know her well, for I've just watched her being built here in space on the Mars orbit. Now we are all set to go on Operation Deep Space, the exploration of the outer planets. One day we'll be back to tell you what lies beyond. You are on your way back to Earth. As you approach the moon, you see a sinister shape streaking towards you, a space pirate. You radio moon-based space patrol. Furious activity and almost at once, the ships are blasting off the launching ramps. I watch you on my teleview with bated breath. Can you hold the pirate off long enough? Yes. Here comes the space patrol.